Over the weekend, Hack 5 had the great honor of hosting the Buzz Out Loud 10-year reunion at our new warehouse and studio space. I can't begin to tell you what a pleasure it was to give back to Tom and Molly, Veronica, Jason, and the rest of the BOL crew. Longtime Hack 5 viewers will know that these people were instrumental in bringing Hack 5 to the San Francisco Bay Area. You can reference the foreshadowing episode 526, dubbed Nerdcore Vacation, where we visited CNET and Revision 3. And while times have surely changed since those days in 2009, since then we've been blessed to work with and learn from the finest folks of Buzztown. I surely hope you remember it as fondly as we do, and if you haven't already, you can find the full reunion episode at youtube.com slash hack5. We'll be back in studio with a regular episode of Hack 5 with Shannon and myself next week. Until then, enjoy. So the things that I learned on this show, like I, I owe so much of what I'm doing now to Buzz Out Loud, aside from the fact that we just got along as well as we did in the studio and just really enjoyed ourselves. It was just kind of get in there, turn on the mics, talk a bunch of bull and uh, see what happened. Well, when I first got the physical challenge, I wasn't sure that my team was, oh wait, this isn't a reality show, is it? It was amazing just to be able to get the band back together for a little bit and see all the fans in person. Uh, you know, I wish we had even more time to get more people from all over the country to come down, um, but I know it's a, it's a huge commitment, but you know, being able to bring in people on Skype and, and talk to other people who have hosted the show before or helped produce it, you know, it's, it was 10 years, and it doesn't seem like that long ago, but our lives have all changed so much, and so much has happened since then. But we can all really kind of go back and look at Buzz Out Loud as being this thing that really propelled us into the next stage of our career. And I'm forever grateful for that, and forever grateful to the people who helped make it happen. So we were just looking at this logo, which has these uh, whatever generic cutouts of stick figures, and I remember that we were putting that together because we needed some kind of logo. We had one of the graphic designers at CNET make it, and we said like it'll be close enough. We just need two dudes. I mean, one of the that dude's substantially shorter, and the other one's substantially fatter than Tom. And then we thought, well, we'll just get some sort of something mini skirt. And then eventually it morphed into actually the three of us on the logo. But this is like the oldest of old school logos on the screen right there. No, in all seriousness, this was a lot of fun. Uh, and it felt good to be on stage with those folks again and, and hang out and talk about stuff. Uh, and, and not feel like we have made mistake or that, you know, we wish the uh, whole thing had been different, but just kind of celebrate what, what all has grown out of that. So um, I'm, I'm really, really happy. And I'm really happy to see how well everybody's doing, not just among my co-hosts, but also people in the audience who are going on to do amazing things. It's really cool. I mean, they really, I mean, the one thing that I learned from this show uh, that will stay with me forever is the, is what strength and, and what, what reinforcement you get from the community. Now, the number of people who you interact with in a, in a community is relatively small, but they're the representatives of everybody, right? They're the elected officials. And if you can interact with them, if you can win over them, if they like you, it's, it, you get so much from it. Tom said something earlier on. He said, doing a show without, uh, a, commu without um, a chat, a live chat, it fe feels, um, I don't know if he said naked or something, but you feel, unprotected or at sea there's just so much you get from having a live audience of people you know who will call you out on your mistakes and still love you at the end of the day it's there's nothing like it yeah i know it's been i mean spectacle fest has just been in the works for so long and we've put so many thousands of man hours into it at this point and you know it's hiring all the, the food vendors and and all the people who are coming to showcase the their permits. newest gear the permitting like just having to renew those permits year after year after year a lot of people were asking if this was going to be spectacle fest spectacle fest is next, next year. year next year, um, yeah. next year. It's sorry it's, it's the planning the planning is really coming along yeah. i feel really positive that this is going to be the year that we get spectacle fest it's be so new. just stay tuned new. stay yes. tuned buy your yeah. tickets now be there i'll set up a paypal year. account yeah you know, I suppose at this point I've been I've been you know run through the dirt on it already. I, I, I pretty much I know what to expect at this point. Spectacle Fest is so elusive. I, I feel like we were close this time. You get the PR emails, uh -huh. and, and there's so much promise, and it just feels like every time. 
like, we get so close we get so close we that it gets ripped out of our hands. We keep going back to her. We know better. And it's just been, I mean, I basically I've sunk my entire life savings into it at this point. And, you know, I'm just, I'm feeling really positive that next year is going to be the year. Um, you know, I've got the location down. I've got a lot of the performers down. We've got the fireworks permit again. Yeah. And Do you think the elephants. Funding, it could ever be a reality? I don't know if that would help at this point. I mean, like I said, my money's all gone. I, I don't. I, I feel like I can't take other people's money at this point because then I would feel really responsible. Yeah. You know, when inevitably we had to cancel again and postpone. Have you kickstarted Spectacle Fest? Oh, maybe Thank that's you. what we need to do. Well, you know what? We should start a Kickstarter for Spectacle Fest next year. Because then you then you have to do it. Yeah. 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 No, we Darren, Darren made a sign. Put this start a Kickstarter for Spectacle Fest. We only need. What, ten million dollars? <laughs> yeah. We can yeah. hit that, right? We can hit that. In Thirty days. Yeah, yeah. hit ten million dollars. Sure. Being privy to the inside access of the reasons why and kind of what needs to be done to make it happen next year, I'm pretty I'm pretty confident. Some of the things that they're trying to do with this, you're you're gonna need a few permits. Like Just a couple. Two. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about a spectacle here. It's gonna be amazing. And I, I hold out hope. Personally, I hold out hope. Yes, Spectacle Fest is happening next year. It will happen. 2016. 2016 is the year Spectacle Fest is real. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for your continued support of Spectacle Fest. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5, but before I get going, I do want to remind you guys that Domain.com is our awesome sponsor that's been making this happen for so long, and we want to thank them for their support. You can tweet them at Domain.com and see why they're just a really fun place to do business. So if you have needs for domain hosting and, uh, and domain registration, check it out over at Domain.com and use the coupon code HACK5, H-A-K-5, that'll get you an extra 15% off when you check out at Domain.com. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. And with that, uh, next week we'll be back in the studio in formation. We'll see what happens. Uh, and for Shannon Morris and myself, we're reminding you to trust your Technolust. But this is kind of leading to another thing that I've been meaning to ask you now that we've you know, happily hosted your 10-year reunion. Uh, Hack 5 is having a little bit of an anniversary in August, and I was thinking we could just have it at your place. Yeah, you know what, you guys should come on. Uh, my, my capacity is about the same as yours. It can hold three. Well, no, I was thinking maybe we could take over both the upstairs and the downstairs. Oh, then five. Yeah, well, and then if we ta if we put Django in the backyard. Six. There we go, see, yeah. So, you know, with a little creativity, I bet we could get it to 10. We could almost get the entire cast yeah. in one room. <laughs> so look forward to that, folks. <laughs> yeah, you take two euros and then you put them back in the jar. Uh, the, ma the mate with the bourbon is really working out. Right through the roof. You're going to be, you know, airborne. <laughs>